Aro is going to be a massively slippery mid-range character. Probably the most slippery character in the entire game. He's got a double jump. He's got a bunch of other moves that let him maneuver around the screen at odd angles. Uh, this guy is, uh, he is possibly the most powerful character in Street Fighter canon. Mm -hmm. Now, it's up for debate here whether, you know, that's Akuma or Bison or Ryu or something like that. But Oro is definitely... Uh, up there if not the overall most powerful he's 140 years old he's got telekinetic powers that means he can move stuff with his mind shots of stranger things um yeah and and, and again it, you might be like why are you bringing up uh you know street fighters plot and canon and uh, power levels and stuff well it's like look how often has akuma been a weak character in any of these fighting games and you know he's one of the most powerful ones right now how often has bison been uh it's happened but usually capcom tries to get bison up there on the the more high end of the scale it's rare where bison is a low tier character but look at someone like sakura or blanca those are characters on the way low end of the power scale and it's not uncommon for them to be lower tier or weaker or whatever right that's just kind of how you know so power is a thing when it comes to these characters it's not the end all be all you know what their moves are what this other stuff is but since oro is like known to be one of the most you know powerful characters in there like the odds of him being super low tier i think are very low like i i think that capcom's going to try to boost him up for that reason alone mm -hmm. well, wasn't he kind of mid-tier in street fighter 3 yes yeah. but his in the in the hands of an extremely good player oro was a he was a competitive viable range character okay. he was um he was not like i mean you didn't see him a lot but when someone really had mastered the character and was really good with them especially with the tengu stone stuff like you felt their presence a lot so he was very hard to play uh he was very technical uh and you know there were characters that were an easier ride to the top so you know why not pick ken right sure 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 and that makes sense um he, it, my first reaction to him after kind of um, absorbing all the different angles thus far of uh, of yesterday's presentation and what we've seen beforehand uh, of Oro in SF5 is that he is like they captured that idea of the almost childlike, mischievous master uh, that you've seen in many different, just like all over the place, like uh, Yoda in Episode Five, the Star Wars yeah. that were good. There was Yoda who, when Luke first, Luke. When he first yeah, discovers yeah. Yoda, he doesn't re think that this is the master that he's looking for. Yoda's this wily little creature that's hopping around and, and seems very carefree and annoying and kind of kooky and is just jumping all over the place, but is is hard to actually catch and, and to slow down and to like, you know, to, to even confront for the first time. And then it turns out that he's actually this masterful, has everything um, totally balanced and is able to do these amazing feats both with his body and his mind and I think that they've captured that very much the kooky mischievous master with Oro not only in his initial presentation like you know the sounds that he makes and the fact that he's like balancing this turtle and oh these animations by the way are awesome if you let them play out yeah. There's one of them where he does this, uh, I don't remember which move it is off the top of my head, but he does this badass attack where he, he does a bunch of damage, he dances on you and all that kind of stuff, and then the turtle ends up on his head. And if you don't push anything, it, the, the animation plays out, and he actually like looks around for the turtle. Like He doesn't know where it is, and it's on his head, just that like you know old gag. Uh, but he's this, this goofy character that, nah, nah, you know, like those kind of noises. Um, and so, but, but we know he's this master that has everything, just he, he knows every T is crossed, every I is dotted, you know, he's like, he catches a fly behind him with chopsticks sort of a thing. Um, and the character's design seems to be, uh, like you said, slippery and goofy. So like, he's that master that's like, he's going to show you up so hard that as you try to get towards him, because he's kind of like zoning, right? If he's full screen, he's going to be throwing fireballs and frustrating you that way. And then he's got some really good like mid range pokes. So as you're trying to get close to him, which is I think where he's going to be at his weakest, he has all these moves to sort of frustrate and thwart you, including his like jump where he just does a dance on your head. That looks frustrating to get hit by uh, and mm -hmm. really annoying. And it's like, as you're trying to like, come here, come here, c c go. he's just making you look like a fool because he's, you know, that master. So it looks like that in both his presentation, in his audio, and then actually in his gameplay, it looks like they've captured that um, sort of persona on all fronts. And I think it's a really good job so far.
Yeah, I love that you compare him to Yoda. Again, talking about influences, Street Fighter is a game where you kind of take like a character who, you know, like Oro and you make him like Yoda and stuff like that. So you kind of got Yoda in the games, so to speak, right? Um, it, it's, it's a, you know, it's a nice thing to have. Um, and then uh, you were talking about like, you know, uh, some of the frustrating stuff like his V-Skill 1 looks like it's going to be hella hard to deal with. He, he throws out... Um, a pretty big fireball. It looks like it's got multiple hits to it. And, and you, you know, the Guile or Laura strategy of following in behind your fireball is extremely deadly here in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, because the last thing that you want to do is have someone up in your face uh, and, and, you know, be negative on block. That is like one of the worst scenarios to have in Street Fighter V. And so if Oro is able to set that stuff up, like you let, you give him room. And I don't necessarily give him room. Basically, like he's able to slip away from you to get that stuff up consistently. It's going to be a problem. You know, it, it's going to be a pretty nice thing. So a lot of startup. It, it's going to be easy to blow it up if you know it's coming and other stuff like that. But it's uh, I, I don't think there's going to be uh, a long time between finding setups like that, because when setups in, in tech and meta are, are really powerful in Street Fighter V, people find it right away. And I think that I think Oro is going to like jump out of the pack and people are going to, you know, be blowing up on Twitter and YouTube and going, ah, oh, this character's too much, you know, kind of thing. Um, you know, the, the classic uh, with, with Rose, like her back heavy kick move was like negative four. And everyone's like, it's negative four. Just punish it with a jab. Like, it's fine. You know, kind of thing. And like, everyone's like, it's too good. You know, and it's like, it's negative four. You know, but anyway, so Oro, I'm, I'm really expecting a big reaction to uh, because any kind of zoner or mid range you know, slippery character is very unlike what this game is right now. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. And then and the last thing I had here for Oro was uh, one of his anti-air buttons leads into about a 30% combo juggle situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I don't know which one it is offhand. I didn't play Oro a lot in Third Strike, but he kind of reaches up and, and double taps you. And then uh, you can jump up and follow it up. 30% damage on an anti-air is extremely powerful in this game. Uh, I compare it to again to like, you know, Rose or um, uh, Poison, uh, where they have these really high uh, things, but but Oro gets it off of a normal. That's going to be really good and doesn't look like he has to spend meter to really eke out that damage. So when Oro's doing all of his mid-range, you know, zoning and stuff, jumping is so huge in this game, you're, you're going to want to be very careful about jumping in on Oro. Absolutely. And, and so it seems, I'm not, I don't think that he's uh, matter of fact high tier yet with what I've seen. I think there's potential, but as we've spoken about many times, it also depends on how easy relatively it is to, to play. And like Oro tends yeah. to be a little more technical and tends to be a little different. So a lot of the lessons you've learned when playing other characters might not translate as effectively to Oro. You might have to start closer to square one than than with other characters uh well i don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because i don't know for sure uh oh and one other thing though he's got a, a mid-air extra jump right his hop so that's yeah, also gonna that's gonna put um their feet into the whole annoying mischievous like oh i have a little gimmick where i can cut my jumps and and change where i'm going there and oh, you whiff the dp ha ha you know and, and that kind yeah. of stuff uh so i think a really good look for the character so far and i wouldn't i mean as far as his tier placement goes i'm not terrified of him which is good and we're going to get into akira pretty soon here and i'm a little more afraid of her uh, for other reasons um so i'm like what yeah, i'm just seeing with to, so to jump it Oro's got three jumps. He has a normal jump, of course, that everyone's got. Then he's got the double jump. Then he has a little hop, which is like the overhead in third strike. And and then he's got a bunch of follow-up moves with it. So he can like just kind of hop over low normals, which is a very nice thing to have in this game. Mm -hmm. And then do a follow-up to, to overhead or hit you back and do a bunch of other things. So when we say this guy is slippery, we mean it. Like this guy is going to kind of, he's going to be a little bit of a Marvel character in here in uh, in Street Fighter V uh, because of all of his movement options. I believe, and I could be wrong about this like maybe not as good of movement options as Rashid, but he's going to be up there. Uh, he he's either going to have the best movement options in the game, or really close to what you know uh, Rashid is, because Rashid probably has the best movement options. He's pretty pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but there it is. The big part of the puzzle that we have very little information about, though, in terms of his abilities, is how much it sucks to be on defense as him. Maybe he's got not a lot in the way of defense, and so when you do finally grab him, well, sure, yeah. But when you do yeah. finally grab him, it might be uh, bad news bears for him. But yeah, sure. Uh, his his exdp in um in in third strike is kin level it has a ton of range it's super invincible this is one of the most powerful characters in the history of, of fighting games or uh, street fighter i should say i don't want to cross genre here but uh anyway um uh, cross game but regardless i mean he, his exdp is so damn powerful like it, it, it's kind of like okay how weak is kin on defense is kind of what i always kind of look at and it's like he's weak if you get him to do a bad commitment. Like, I think Oro's gonna fall into a similar category. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna be damn scary, so.